All right, moving on, talking about Congress, and we're talking here about what's called constituent accountability. I have that written up at the top. Remember, a constituent is a person who lives in your district. And so what we're talking about here is how do people vote? How do uh, Congress uh, you know, members vote based on their district or what's their philosophy of voting? And that's really what we're getting at here. So in the, in the first one is four of these, by the way. So you'll need four cards. Um, they're all short and easy. But the first one is called a delegate. Uh, again, constituent accountability, 2.7. All right, let's go to the backside. A delegate. So if you're a representative and you have kind of this mindset that you're a delegate, this is what that means. Your voting decision is this. So right at the top, voting decision, nice and big. And then the, the voting decision is this. You always follow constituents' preferences. So you're just like, hey, my constituents want taxes cut, so I'm going to vote for tax cuts. Or my constituents don't support tax cuts, so I won't vote for tax cuts. Or whatever it is that you feel that your constituents um, believe in, that's what you do. right? So that's kind of ultimately how you view your job. You're, you're not t uh, overly partisan um, or following what the party does because you're going to do what your constituents want. Um, and so if they're relatively moderate, you will be too. If they're relatively conservative, you'll do that. If, you're, if they're pretty liberal, you'll vote that way. So that's kind of the idea. That's a delegate. All right, good. Put that aside. Delegate, first one. Second one is called a trustee, 2.8. 2.8, trustee. I always think a trustee this way. Trustee, trust me. So, um, trustee, trust me. Let's see how that works. So the idea is that, you know what, I'll take into consideration my constituent views. Of course, if they fairly, fairly strongly believe in something, then I'll probably go with them. But at the same time, I'm going to use my own judgment. Like I'm not just this kind of vessel, uh, that, that the, the, whatever the constituents want, they get, I, I also, they, they elect me to use my own judgment. So there's a little bit more here of, um, you know, review, you know, refine, you know, this idea of refining the beliefs of the constituents is a little bit more of that here. If you remember back in the Federalist paper, when we talked about that, um, so they're going to use their own judgment. So trustee, trust me, Hey, look, you elected me, trust me to make the best decisions. Um, I'm going to refine and enlarge the views of my constituents and I'm going to make the best decision. So you should trust me to make good decisions. So trustee, trust me, delegate, I'm going to do what you want. Trustee, hey, you trust me. I mean, I'll take into consideration, but at the same time, I'll use my own judgment, all right? All right, next one is called a Politico 2.9, 2.9 Politico. All right, if you need to pause, go ahead. All right, um, so there's two things here that they're looking at, their vote decision. Um, one, they're a delegate on issues constituents care about. So if, if everyone's really, really fired up about an education bill and they support it, well, then a political will say, hey, you know what the smart play is here? You know what the smart play is? <laughs> Vote with my constituents. I'm going to make the smart play. All right. Uh, but if they don't really care, you know, they don't really care. Well, then there'll be a trustee like, oh, you know what? My, my, th this military funding bill, like my constituents don't really care about it. So I'm going to vote the way I think I should. I'm going to use my own judgment. So Politico is kind of, you know, that they're, they're going to be play, play, uh, they're going to be political. You know what I'm saying? They're going to play what's best for them in terms of getting uh, elected a Politico. So we got delegate. Hey, I'll do what you guys want. We got the trustee model, which is, yeah, you know what? I, I appreciate your guys' viewpoint, but you elected me. So like, trust me. Okay. Trustee, trust me. And then we got the Politico who's like, oh, they really care about this. I'm voting that way but you know what they don't really care about this so i want to vote the way i want all right so trustee trust me um at times as well that's a politico the last type um that we're going to look at is partisan 2.10 a partisan viewpoint and this one's probably pretty obvious because the root word of partisan is party all right and um the idea is the member of congress who votes with their party and almost never deviates from that they pretty much just vote with their party all the time Often, um, someone who's a who's a real partisan, they're from a very one-sided partisan district or state. So, like they're from a district that votes overwhelmingly Democrat, or they vote overwhelmingly Republican. So, like 
you could pretty much put anybody up. Like you could put like a dead person up in that district, and as a Republican, they'd probably win, or a dead person up in a in the Democrat, and they'd probably win because like the the district is so reflexively partisan that like people just vote for whoever has a D next to their name if it's a Democrat partisan district, and they'll vote for whoever has an R next to their name. Um, so it doesn't really matter. And these people, these Congress people, they're going to vote this way because they just, they know this is what their expectations are as members. Let me show you a couple examples of this in some charts. Go ahead and um, you know, pause it if you need to finish. All right. Um, so look at this. This is the partisan index by congressional district. And what this does is that the darker blues are districts that are overwhelmingly Democrat. The dark reds are districts that are overwhelmingly Republican. That's defined by there are more than there are 10 percent or 10 percent more um, Republicans or Democrats in that district. So those are overwhelmingly partisan. What you'll notice is that there's very few districts in our country that are what we would call moderate. And that's the gray districts where it's like less than 2% one way or the other. There's not a lot of them. You see a couple here in the Midwest, a couple in Texas, New Mexico. There's just not many. And then you have like the lighter shades of blue, which are Democrat, like 5% to 10% more Democrats. And usually the Democrats going to win. And then you get like the lighter red ones, which are the Republican ones. And so you see across the country, most districts now are not competitive. Less than 100 out of 435 districts are actually competitive districts and, and, and are what we would call, um, you know, they're, they're not as partisan, okay? But most districts are highly partisan. So you're going to get highly partisan members in Congress with very little incentive to actually compromise and refine and enlarge the public view. They're mostly just going to reflexively vote for their party and not really get anything done. Like they just won't even compromise since compromise is needed in our system and compromise is forced through our system. Since there are so many partisan members in Congress, nothing gets done most of the time. Okay. We just don't, we don't have anything get passed. And then see here, this is after the 2016 election. Um, look at the number of districts that Democrats won this is congressional districts for the House of Representatives. How many congressional districts did the Democrats win where Trump also won in that district? There were 12. Only 12 Democrats won in the district that was won by Trump. And 25 Republicans in the House won in districts that Clinton won. So most districts are going to go exactly the way you'd expect. The Democrat wins. The Dem the, they vote for the presidential candidate for the Democrats. The Republican wins. They vote for the Republican nominee for president. So these are the sort of ways that uh, people vote um, in Congress and kind of the viewpoint of like what they do. And uh, yeah. All right, cool. Those are the four. You need to study those and be ready to rock and roll on them when we do the practices. Thanks.